Hey everybody, welcome to another Photoshop CS6 tutorial. My name is Buddy Blackford and today we're going to be setting up your interface preferences. So to get to your uh, preferences, all you got to do is hit edit and then come down to preferences down here at the bottom and then choose interface. Um, in the last tutorial I went over general preferences and uh, so this time I'm going over the interface. So new in uh, CS6 you're able to choose the appearance of your interface by the color theme here so you can um, change how dark you want so I'll just click on it and you'll see the entire thing changing so that's dark and then here's the really bright so whatever feels good on your eyes I like this one here um, up to you guys what feels better on your eyes so just uh, choose whatever um, the next set that we have here is um, the screen modes uh, the standard screen mode here um, pretty much you ch you're changing the uh, background and the, like the border colors for the different screen modes so um, here's our borders here um, we can change like it, it, you can see like the back is changing I'm just gonna go with default because I like that full screen with menus um, so you get you can change the different types of screens down here with this button here you can go standard full screen with menus or full screen and this is how you change them here now let's come down here into the options section let's look at um, the auto collapse iconic panels here um, so what this does is when you click off of your panel here it'll go away so it won't always stay up if you have auto collapse iconic panels on which sometimes that's not useful when you want to use something like your info panel so I keep that off so the next one auto show hidden panels um, they temporarily they temporarily appear when you point to the edge of the of the uh, application window so um, where's the hidden ones well that well I guess that's what it does I can't do it well we're in the preferences but that's what it does so I, I like to keep that checked um, open documents is tabs I like that that just makes these tabs up here at the top enable floating document window docking um, it allows you to like pull out the uh, tabs and have them floating out so like a couple of tutorials ago we talked about um, managing windows and you're able to pull out like one window and work on it and have it update in the other window so I like to keep that one checked because I do that sometimes we got show channels and color so um, so there's a channels panel down here and it'll show these in color instead of grayscale and actually I want that on because that helps me so I want to have that checked. We've got show menu colors and our, I guess it's going to show the different uh, menus for the colors. Um, it'll be in your uh, user defined colors so that's where that's going to be at. Um, we'll come over here to show tooltips and um, I like to have that on while I'm doing my tutorials but it's up to you um, whether or not you want to have that on there so when your cursor is over like when your cursor is over top of something a tooltip will appear let's see if I can find one I think when I put my cursor over this it appeared yep so those are like tooltips like these yellow pop-up boxes and then we have enable text drop shadows and this is new so you select this to have your uh, drop shadows on the panel labels but I've got my panels over here with the labels let's un uncheck it I mean, I'm not really seeing too much of a difference but I'm gonna leave it checked because it was already left checked so that's fine for me show transformation values here um, so basically you got the uh, top left, bottom, top right, bottom left, and bottom right, or never if you want. And um, I guess this, it just shows you 
near the cursor where you want it to be. So like when I was pulling, when, when you pull out like a shape in CS6, it'll show the uh, width and height uh, next to your cursor, and this shows where to, where to show it. And we've got our uh, text down here. So we got our default language here. UI stands for user interface. And here's our, our font sizes here. So whatever you guys feel like doing with the uh, font size, it depends. I just keep mine on small just to keep everything, because uh, I can read it. And I just keep everything like more compact. And so if everything's big, let's put it on large. Okay. No, it didn't didn't do much. Oh well. So we'll go back to preferences and interface. Do my font size small. Oh, it's for my text. Changes will take effect the next time you start Photoshop. That's why I didn't see it yet. So that's for the text here. We got to restart it and able to uh, change the font size. So uh, that's for that's it for the interface preferences here, and uh, we're about six minutes in. The next one, yeah, you know, we'll we'll go over the uh, file handling final or file handling preferences right now. So um, we have our saving options here. So image previews always save. So I always keep that on always save because I don't mind those like when. Um, when you're like trying to use the preview, you can just like see it quicker or quicker. File extension, use lowercase, use uppercase. That's up to you. Um, I think lowercase is the norm. And so that's really up to you. So we got um, save as to original folder, which it goes back to the uh, folder that you started out in. And we got save in background where it automatically saves. So if I uncheck this, this one will become unchecked. So basically, this is just an auto save every 10 minutes. Um, it's up to you how long. Some people can work for a long time without having to save, but I would recommend either 5 or 10 minutes for your auto save. I got mine on 10 minutes. A lot can happen in 10 minutes if you're working really hard and you're in the zone. So here we got our file compatibility section, and uh, we got our camera raw preferences. So if you click on this, we got a whole bunch of preferences here. Um, so you can ch uh, change how you like pretty much handle them. So down here you can automatically open up the JPEG with settings and TIFFs. So DNG is a file format for uh, camera raw files so um, you don't really have to worry about these I'd keep these all on default for now um, let's see I'm really just reading these through real quick to see so yeah yeah just uh, pretty much you can just keep these how they are and that's a good setting that I would uh, recommend so we've got the uh, prefer Adobe camera raw for supported raw for files and uh, that's it uses the Adobe Camera Raw uh, file like it uses the little program it has inside so you can like edit and everything like that so that's what you would want to have checked if you want to use that um, exif, pro, ignore, exif profile tag um, which is a color space met, metadata um, attached to camera images so that's up to you if you want to ignore it or not. I have it unchecked because I don't care. Um, ignore rotation metadata. So that's also attached to digital cameras, um, the rotation metadata. And this is new in CS6. So let's go to the next one. That's up to you. I just keep it off. These are my settings that I keep for my file handling. As before saving layered TIFF files, that's uh, self explanatory. And then disable compression of PSD and PSB files, and um, that's new also. If you don't want to compress it, that's up to you. But um, you're allowed; it, it allows you to do maximum compatibility. So 
maximize PSD and PSB file compatibility. So you should be good without ha without uh, having to disable the compression. So that's good. So those those are the uh, preferences for interface and file handling. And uh, I guess that's all. So thanks for watching this one. Um, we should be able to move on to uh, some cooler stuff after we get done with all our preferences and there's a whole bunch of preferences in Photoshop so let's uh, get through those and um, basically we're gonna start chugging along so see you guys in the next tutorial keep on watching goodbye